This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 from the downtown studios of Think Tech Hawaii in the Pioneer Plaza. Normally we have beautiful weather in Hawaii, but the last few days have been rainy and, and almost like winter time. Imagine that, winter weather in December. Uh, this is the last show of the 2017 year. And uh, it's a quarterly commentary, and I've got a guest today by the name of Ray Suchiyama, who you've seen probably many times on Think Tech Hawaii shows, and including my own. Um, he comes with a very interesting uh, perspective that uh, he, he's gotten over the years from, from a lot of experience domestically and internationally. So it's always refreshing to hear a, a different perspective, and we're going to have a little dialogue and talk about some of the the, the, the main stories that occurred during 2017. Ray, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. This is the end of the year of the rooster, and next year will be the year of the dog. The dog? Yes. I hope uh, <laughs> that doesn't mean it's going to be a, a bad year. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we're uh, coming uh, uh, to the end of a year that's been a very exciting one for the state of Hawaii. A business is booming. It is. It's doing very well, and, and I've been very excited about some of the recent announcements uh, that have just come out in the past week. You know, all the different banks are coming out right. with bonuses to their employees and, and pay raises. Um, you know, it's exciting times. I, I think it was Hawaiian Airlines just a few days ago, and the headlines in the Pacific Business News said that, um, you know, we're booming. Right. You know, the, the economy's doing very well. So it's been a good year for us, and I guess there's a number of reasons for that. <laughs> And uh, we'll, we'll get into some of that uh, here shortly, but I guess one of the things that I think has been in the news a lot the last week or 10 days, um, in, in, particularly in the last 10 days, but even more so during the year, is tax reform. Right. Um, it's been an interesting process. Right. Um, and, and just to lay a little groundwork, just, uh, you, you probably know this as well as I do, but when I was going to college back in the 80s, right and I was going to Accounting School 101. They were talking about tax reform back then. <laughs> so it's taken us about 30, 35 years to get to where we're at today. And we finally have, I don't want to call it tax simplification, right. because there's nothing simple about this, but it is a, a new way of approaching taxation. Um, as a layperson, and, and I'm a CPA, so Go I've ahead. got a yeah. little bit more right, insight right. into this, but as a layperson, what's your thoughts on, on the tax reform? Well, I think that's a, a very significant perspective that you just brought in, because uh, I did, uh, n very few people know that the tax, uh, taxes and the structure of taxes, paying taxes, have not changed that much uh, since the 80s. And, of course, um, one of the um, uh, things that we look for when we look at economies globally is what is this tax rate for corporations, for individuals? That's the first thing you ask. Is it high, like 30-something percent or more for individuals uh, similarly? Or is it lower? Like in Hong Kong, there's a 15 percent flat tax, <laughs> for example. 15 percent. Yeah, one five, one five. So, and, and Saudi Arabia and other uh, countries in the Gulf, very similar uh, tax regimes. And so you get a sense that, wow, you, uh, they're focused on um, uh, growing their economies and growing business. And it's so, worked very well for them. That's right. I mean, that's Ireland right. has a very favorable tax Correct. environment. And a lot of companies right. are set up over there. Uh, there's a, and of course, uh, there are other countries that, that set up specifically, like uh, some places like the Bahamas, or even states like New Jersey <laughs> or, uh, or uh, Nevada and so forth. So you're correct that this is the foundation of a business climate. And I think what's significant to put it into perspective in case the audience or the listeners haven't uh, seen this yet is that the corporate rates have dropped from 35% down to 21%. That's a huge drop. Uh, and that does put us maybe not at parity with other countries, but certainly moving us a lot closer. And so that's one of the reasons is because now all of a sudden the taxes are 30 to 40 percent less than what they were before, starting in 2018. That's why the companies are coming out and, and they're doing a little happy dance and they're giving bonuses to people. 
And of course, uh, what should happen is that corporations with extra cash or money invest in uh, innovation to make better plants, to expand and hire more people overseas, to sell more of their products, and to have more product development, all the above. Right. No, it, it's, a, it's, it's a great opportunity for the businesses in 2018, but it's also going to be beneficial to individuals. You know, the individual rates are dropping. The brackets of when the different rates kick in have expanded. Um, there's, and some, this is a component that gets a little complicated, but the standard deduction has almost doubled. You know, and that impacts a lot of people, particularly in the older retired group and those that are just starting out, where they don't have a lot of itemized deductions. Uh, and they always take the standard. Well, now all of a sudden, instead of taking, say, $6,000 or $12,000 standard deduction, if you're married, um, now all of a sudden it's $24,000. Wow. So it just doubled. So people could save potentially two or $3,000 a piece just from that one component of and the And hopefully reform. in the United States, one of the things that distinguishes the United States from other countries like Japan is that people don't save or can't save because of taxes. Now, we hope that it leads to higher rates of savings and also, uh, people have more cash to buy things, uh, to invest in their futures. Right. Education, uh, you know, more uh, uh, house renovations and, and cars and so forth. And that also accelerates the economy. It does. You know, it, there's a multiplying effect in this that, you know, you, you give people more. They get to keep more of what they're making. Right. They're, they've got really two options. Either they're going to save it or they're going to spend it. And for whatever reasons, we have a tendency to spend it more than we save it. So that's really going to accelerate the economy and, and get things going, not only in Hawaii, but throughout the entire country. And of course, Hawaii has a, a major tourism industry for people on the mainland throughout the world, Japan and China and so forth. Uh, hopefully, um, people uh, will come more to, to Hawaii because the tourism is, of course, has, has had a banner year, maybe over 8 million uh, this year. Well, particularly when the companies that are in the business are generating higher profits now because of lower taxes. Now, all of a sudden, maybe they can do some more renovation work. Maybe they can do some um, you know, add-ons to their properties that's going to make it more attractive for people to come, you know, which could trigger a little bit more tourism, uh, which would be a good thing. Um, you know, that's our, we've got really two primary economies or components of our economy here. One is going to be tourism, the other one's going to be the military. And that's pretty much what drives our state right now, and we've got to keep both of them as healthy as we can. So what you're saying, though, is the uh, recent uh, Trump-initiated uh, uh, tax reform is a good thing. It's a positive for Hawaii, I I generally speaking. I think it's good not only for Hawaii, but for the entire country. I, I think it's going to put more money into the company's pockets, which they've already begun to share with their employees, which is very positive. But as you mentioned, there's also going to be now resources for reinvestment, for expanding product lines, for growing the business, uh, and maybe even moving the, the employment scale up a little bit to higher paying jobs. Right. You know, I think it's going to be positive all the way around. Because one of the things that people talk about tourism, it's a great industry, but there aren't that many high-paying jobs as opposed to software or e-commerce or uh, other, other industries or finance uh, in the United States. Yeah, well, that's unfortunately the nature of the business, I guess. Not a lot we can do about that. But, you know, as we add on to some different maybe venues that would be attractive uh, to the tourists, Maybe there's an opportunity there for us to, to move those average wages up a little bit into, you know, and I, I know this may be a silly analogy, but I think Disneyland or, or Disney World or, or the different high-tech type of um, experiences that people can have. I mean, we've got one of the Disney properties out right, here, yeah. you know, and there could be some opportunities to have an experience that people can't get anywhere else, maybe an interactive, interactive type of uh, ocean experience, you know, that could be very high tech. Um, you know, there could be things that we can develop, you know, with this extra money. In, what in. you're saying is that with extra cash, they can uh, do more R&D, uh, more, you know, innovation in, in our tourism plant, which is, when you look at Waikiki, it is old, it is aging, and uh, the, there hasn't been a major uh, property there for many, many years. and, and uh, it's, it's so small, the land uh, base, you can't really build any yeah. major projects anymore. Yeah, and it's hard to go much higher than they've already gone. So it's going to be interesting. 
Uh, but we've got, uh, I think, an exciting 2018 looking forward to. Um, you know, the tax reform, I think, is going to provide some opportunities. It's going to give individuals and businesses some extra money. Um, what's interesting that for the state, the Department of Taxation, they've had some particular challenges in their IT area that I think is pretty in common knowledge. Um, you know, they've had three, I believe, different tax systems they've tried to get up and running. They're, they're working on the third one. I think they're starting to get close, but uh-oh, they just changed the rules. Now, and, and for those that don't know, a lot of the rules at the state level uh, mirror what's happening at the federal level. And so that's how they try to keep it right, in sync. Right, right. Um, and so if you're preparing certain tax forms one way at the federal, then they try right. to make it's it consistent at right, the state. Right, right. So now the state's got to go back and re-examine oh, wow. everything <laughs> to make sure that as right. soon as we finish 2017 under the old rules, right. we better start changing right. things for 2018, which is just going to be another layer right. of complication for the current software that they're working with. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that has an impact uh, in our state. Well, it's, it's also um, coming back to a project management, which is, uh, is it a taxi department initiative or a uh, technology IT initiative? That, or is it both? both. <laughs> and having said both, then you really have to work with the people who are going to be using the software, you know, people at the taxi department, and also people who are going to be customers of that also, and the people who are going to implement the coding. So it's a very complicated project wherever you uh, look at it. Well, and it's also important to remember that there's nothing easy about taxation. You know, this bill that they just passed is 500 pages wow. thick. That's right, yeah. You know, and all that does is set a direction. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell uh -huh. anybody how to get there. So okay. now they've got to write all the regulations for 500 pages. So it's not complete. <laughs> well, it's, it's complete in that they know where they want to go. Right. But how they're going to get there is uh -huh. going to be the regulations. So now mm -hmm. the IRS has got to come out and write the regulations which could be another three to 5,000 pages. <laughs> now, once the regulations yeah, are written, yeah. and I don't know about you, but I'm not that good at reading <laughs> regulation ease. Right, right. So there's going to be rulings ah, and interpretations, interpretations right. on this. Yeah. And that's going to add gonna another 5,000. going to be a lot of test cases uh, about oh, this or that. And every jurisdiction in the country, mm. and I think there's about, what, 12 of them? Mm. Every jurisdiction can have a challenge right. and have a different finding or really? result. So depending yeah. upon the jurisdiction that you're in, yeah. you can have different ways of doing the same mm -hmm. thing, uh, which is, again, another layer of complexity. Right. And all I'm saying is that they're gonna, they've are gonna they got the, the bill, now they've got to do the regulations, and they're going to do the interpretations and the rules. Um, it's going to be a while before this all gets figured out, and then the state has to stay up to speed on all of this to make sure that what they're doing at a state level is consistent with the federal level. Now, some of the uh, news reporting uh, last week when the tax reform bill was going through was that it will impact high tax states, Hawaii included, California, New York, others, yeah. Yeah. and that it's going to be a mess dealing with this, uh, and it will uh, be less of an impact with uh, states that have no tax or right. very little, like a Nevada right. or Washington state. What do, you feel, what do you think about that? You know, it, it's a very good point. Yeah. I think they're correct, but it may not be as bad as everybody seems to think. And let me, let, we need to take a quick break okay. right now. Right. As soon as we come back from break, then let's, let's reopen okay. and, and we'll, we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm here with Ray Suchiyama, and we're going through a quarterly commentary. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in about 60 seconds. Hi guys, it's RV Kelly. I'm your host of Out of the Comfort Zone, where I find cool people with cool solutions to problems that all of us face. Now, the thing is, we're really cool, and I only invite really cool people, but the thing is, I think you're kind of cool too, so I think you should come and watch. That Thursdays at 11 a.m. here on OC16 Television with Think Tech Hawaii. I'm RV Kelly, host of Out of the Comfort Zone, and I will see you next Thursday. It's gonna be a long time before it gets all sorted out. 
Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. And welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're doing a quarterly commentary today with Ray Suchiyama, talking about some of the, the big stories of 2017. This is the last show of 2017, so I want to wish everybody a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, and, and let's get right back into a really exciting topic of taxes. <laughs> Ray, you had mentioned uh, before the break that uh, there was some uh, you know discussion out there about you know, high tax states, you right. know, getting hurt a little right. bit, uh, a little bit more maybe right. than the lower tax states. It's an equal impact, let's say, right? right. And it's, it's true. Well, it's, it's, there's, there is some truth to it. Um, but as in most tax questions, <laughs> uh, it's not always going to be an easy answer. And, you know, if you're talking about businesses or individuals, you might have two different answers. Right. Uh, individuals, um, one of the components of the reform is that the income tax right. and property tax, right. that piece, those, those two components, uh, are going to be capped right. at a $10,000 deduction. So you're only going to be able to deduct $10,000 of income tax and real estate tax starting next year. Now, there are some states that that's not going to be an issue at all. Mm. And the individuals are not going to be hurt by this at right. all. So that's okay for them. For the states that do have high property values, high real estate taxes, and high income taxes, I it, adds Hawaii, it adds up. It does. It adds <laughs> up. Um, you know, I, I would think that you know, there's only going to be a few states that are really going to be in that area where you've got very high property right. taxes and high income right. taxes. Hawaii, California, right. New York are probably the two that come to mind the, the quickest. They may have some issues uh, for the individuals. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that for people who have taken these deductions before, um, okay, they're capped out at 10. Right. There may only be a thousand or two that they lose. Right, right, right. But if it's not enough, right. you know, if it doesn't exceed the standard deduction, right. which now goes up to 24,000. Right. Oh. Okay. They still may end up okay, right, right? Because there's a lot of retired individuals and maybe people that are just starting out that they don't have big mortgages, they don't have high value houses, right. they don't have a lot of income. It all tax. depends on your circumstances. Exactly. Tax, uh, yeah, yeah. So for yeah. those individuals where these things only add up to maybe five or, or ten thousand um, dollars, they're not going to get hurt right, because right. now all of a sudden their standard deduction is $24,000. Right, right. So it's offset by the exactly. major element of the so uh, Trump reform, I the think, tax reform. You know, and I don't want to use the fake word, right. uh, fake news you know, <laughs> phrase, but there is some misinformation or misunderstanding out there that there may be some isolated cases where people are hurt by it. Um, but there's also other components that's going to offset some of that, standard deduction being one, but also income tax rates themselves are coming right, down. Right, uh, yes. And the brackets where the higher rates kick in right. are right. wider now. Right. Uh, and so there, there's some, some offset, mm -hmm. and, and not everybody right. is going to be hurt by this. So you have to uh, you know, focus in and not be kind of misguided by what you hear. Well, and that's, that's probably my most... Uh, important message that I want to send to people is that get engaged in this because the savings can be huge. Wow. Yep. You know, you can save a lot of money right. if you have just a little bit of awareness of yep. what's going on. Uh, stay on top of it. Communicate with your preparer. Right. You know, um, make sure that they're giving you, you know, the straight information, not necessarily what you're hearing, you know, around town um, because people have different agendas, you know, and so Talk to the preparer. They have only one job, and that's to take care of you and your tax situation, and they're going to be doing it to the best of their ability. So make sure you've got communication right. with them and that you're staying on top of this. And the savings could be quite well, large. So let's move on. We, okay. We've kind of okay. beaten the, the yeah, taxes beaten up a little bit. Next subject. Um, 
One that you have, uh, I think, some experience with, or at least in conceptually, is the Amazon situation. We had, we had heard that Amazon was looking for a new place to build another headquarters or a new facility. Um, share some well, thoughts for, with me on uh, that. Last year, for the last year, Amazon has been on a hiring spree, first of all. It, it's been hiring hundreds, maybe thousands of uh, bright young MBAs to really work uh, in uh, e-commerce. Also, because uh, Amazon is not only software, it's also about delivery. They have to have warehouses, product, all kinds of things. They look to establish what's called fulfillment centers. And they've been establishing them by the dozens all around in regions, north, north, uh, east, west, uh, southeast, and midwest, and so forth. For example, there's five in Ohio. But the biggest news was that 283 cities and uh, regions uh, proposed to Amazon to be their place to be the Amazon Next headquarters. So as you know, uh, Amazon grew from Seattle. That was their uh, birthplace. Now they're looking for a second one. It may be in the middle uh, of the U.S., it could be in the Northeast, it could be in the Southeast. Uh, to, and, so doesn't, yeah. wouldn't it make sense for them to not have them too close that's together? Correct. That's correct. There needs that's to be right. some distance, you of know, course. geographically. And, but, but they need a lot of land. They need a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, because they're going to invest five billion people, uh, five billion dollars, and hire maybe fifty thousand people. Uh, fifty thousand. That's right. Yeah. Well, that, that rules Florida <laughs> out. They'll, they'll sink the state. Okay. <laughs> but this was the biggest, um, I guess, uh, uh, economic, uh, you know, uh, opportunity for many, many cities. Well, or nearly oh, three hundred. Huge. Uh, that they applied for. This was the biggest news uh, of of the last year. Now. Real touchy question, but yeah. I'm going to ask it. Did Hoy ever have a chance in this at all? No, uh, it did not. Uh, and it needs a, uh, first of all, it needs a hub, a major airport hub, like Atlanta, like a Dallas, right. uh, like a Chicago, and so forth. That's, the hub is the key to it. And also, they need a lot of land near the hub, right? Because they can't be you know, 100 miles away from the hub to have the warehouse. It has to be near uh, somewhat. And they also want to have trucking capabilities, That's right. too. Not That's just right. airport, but And also it's all about logistics, you yeah. know, how to uh, get something from here to there in, in the quickest amount of time, very efficient, and so forth. And you have, have workers who look at this, uh, computerize it, and so forth. Right. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, it would be great to have them here, but it just wouldn't make sense for them to do that because logistically they just, they need to have the hub right. near an airport, near rail stations, near trucking. Uh, All the roads, above. You know, All the and, above. And it just does, it doesn't work right. here. So, you know, but a great opportunity. Um, maybe someday... Uh, we'll have a, an, another opportunity uh, to diversify the economy. But, you know, we still have the Department of Defense. We still have the, the visitor industry, two very strong uh, components of our economy right now. Um, what sort of diversification do you think might be possible? For well, that's, that's the $64 billion question. And there was a recent Hawaii News article that said the Hawaii economy is booming. We have 2% unemployment, which is the lowest in the U.S., uh, tourism has brought in uh, year on year, you know, fourteen billion dollars, you know, in twelve months. Uh, so, uh, what's there to worry about? And but there are people who have been thinking about this for the last three decades. Oh yeah. Uh, we could. We don't. Uh, well, uh, to have everything in one pot, to have a three-legged school, a, a stool that we had in the eighties. Agriculture, tourism, and military is now down to two, down to plus two. government. <laughs> the rise of uh, well, local but, but city, state, government. Federal government doesn't create anything. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have revenues that That's bring correct, in customers. But, so. but it's, it's, it's a uh, hiring center of its own also. So that part is still has become uh, larger huge, through the years. Yeah. Now you were saying that, that what a third of our uh, probably you know one out of three maybe thirty five percent. So this is unlike any state in the union. Look at Washington State or Oregon or, or Nevada or mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. even California. Uh, they have far more private sector jobs, uh, and even parts of China, <laughs> communist countries, have have more private sector jobs uh, percentage wise. So we are unique, and it's scary for some people. Uh, to uh, go look at the future and see only tourism even grow larger and larger. Mm -hmm.
But you know, back, uh, I was on the board of directors for the Chamber of Commerce 25 years ago, and we were wrestling with these issues yeah. back then too. So, you know, not a lot has changed over the years, um, but I believe um, we missed two opportunities. And I'd like to sh sh share your thoughts on this, but the two areas that I think we could have done better if we had started 25 years ago, or maybe even longer, education and healthcare. I mean, I think back in the, the 50s, uh, when we just got statehood and into the 60s, if we had identified healthcare and education as two primary sources for us to focus on, um, we could have set the bar very, very high and really benefited not only Hawaii, but the entire Pacific Rim if we had done that. What's your thoughts? Well, you're, you're correct that uh, some opportunities like medical tourism would have been uh, uh, people paying, you know, five, ten times more per person coming here for, you know, the first class global medical treatment would have been uh, another industry for Hawaii. You're, you're, you're correct. Uh, now we have people flying in from Maui to Oahu and people from Oahu and Hawaii flying to the mainland yeah. uh, for medical care. That, that's uh, one area that we still have to work on. And, and because of the lack of diversification, we've had uh, outright migration. Mm -hmm. uh, younger people especially are moving to the mainland. We are one of only eight states in the union that has a population decline. And, uh, and, and it's, more, uh, and it's uh, as you uh, lived in Vegas, um, there's probably 80 to 90,000 former Hawaii residents living in uh, Nevada, working yep. at hospitality hotel jobs, maybe some uh, s same salary, but because of lack of state income tax, you know, 30% more. A lot of retirees. Yeah, yeah. Uh, retirees also, mm -hmm. and, and excise tax, and things are cheaper there, real estate, gas, mm -hmm. uh, milk, and so forth, groceries. So um, it is not a uh, good um, uh, statistic to have. No, it's actually, I think, depressing in a <laughs> sense that, you know, I mean, I've got, <clears throat> I've got three sons. One of them's on the mainland, two of them are here, so I'm very fortunate. But one of those two is thinking about going to the mainland. Yeah. You know, and primarily because they can buy a house. You know, in, in this, the, the, I guess, scenario is that they go to the mainland, they increase their salary by 20 or 30 percent because they pay right, better, of course. And, they, and they can buy a house for half right. or less the cost, and the cost of living is 20 or 30 percent less. Right. It's, a, it's, it's hard to argue with the logic of that. And, you know, it's just, we, we need, need to just accept the fact that, you know, things are going to be more expensive here, and there's, there's more benefits than negatives, but there are people that will never buy into that. Yeah, and so it, it's a problem that I think we're just going to have to learn to deal with. Yeah, but like you say, it's not a new, uh, <laughs> new discovery. Uh, Chamber and others and people in the business community and so forth have been wrestling with this for 30 years. And, and it's something that, you know, to uh, really uh, change. Uh, and, of course, we're losing a lot of people in uh, high technology or biotech or finance mm -hmm. who want to have a career in those fields uh, leaving from the mainland. Well, you know, believe it or not, we have just finished oh, our, wow. our episode this week. Um, we're going to wrap up, uh, but I would think it's fair to say that 2018 is going to have some interesting uh, challenges ahead of us, uh, just like 2017. That's we right. still there, There's this rail project we didn't talk about that we got to mm -hmm. figure out how that's going to progress, and, uh, and then it's the implementation of tax reform that just got started. So it's going to be an interesting year. Well, maybe President Reagan is right. Uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. Well, that's the theory. You know, <laughs> I just hope my boat doesn't have a hole in it. <laughs> uh, but this is a Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I was here with Ray Suchiyama today talking about some of the, uh, the issues that happened during uh, 2017. Uh, we broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. Uh, I sure hope to see you next week. Um, but until then, have a great Happy New Year and be safe. Aloha.